SteveHookPhoto.com, and I am here today with the Sony NEX7 once again. My review is supposed to be up this weekend, um, late October, but it might be delayed due to the flood in the Sony factory. Uh, this camera is going to be delayed most likely till after the new year. Uh, I don't have any kind of confirmed date or information, but Sony did issue a press release saying the NEX7 was one of the cameras affected with the flood uh, along with the 5N so they're delaying the release of the NEX7 turns out I happen to have one here I got one early for review so I figured I would take this time to go over some of the uh, features of the camera I did put up a first look video a while ago and uh, a couple weeks ago and went over a little bit of it but this will be a little more thorough uh, basically, the NEX7 is evolved from the NEX3 and NEX5 5N. It's a little bit larger, has way more control, and as you see it here, it has the Sony 50mm uh, 1.8 lens attached to the camera. Um, as you can see, the big claim to fame with the NEX7 is you have a built-in EVF here and it's an OLED display amazing quality EVF it makes the EVF in uh, say the Ricoh or the Olympus EP3 the external EVS, EVFs it makes them look like old 1970s or 80s VHS tape where this looks more like a modern day uh, HD production so the viewfinder is top notch you also have the tri-navi controls let me turn this off for a second and they're very nice. They're smooth, but they have a nice click to them. So when you turn them, they're solid. They're not going to mistakenly move. And this is key right here. Sony designed the Tri-Navi control system so you can control everything with your camera while even looking through the viewfinder. You don't have to step back, hit it, go into menus, and dig, dig your way around. Uh, Sony also has a pop-up flash that pops up in case you want some fill flash. You can also use the Sony Alpha line of flashes that they use on their pro bodies that will go onto the hot shoe. Um, let me turn it on here. We have a switch here so you can control what this button does. Exposure lock or AF lock. You have your choice. You have your playback button. Again, this is the flash button. This is the diopter over here for the EVF and the uh, viewfinder comes off of the EVF if you don't want to use or I'm sorry the extension the eye cup if you don't want to use an eye cup you can take that off I like the eye cup so I snap it into place um, so basically if you hit this center button of the control wheel which feels very nice you get the same menu um, so you, you you have the same exact options here aperture priority program auto shutter priority uh, manual, 3D pano, pano, anti-motion blur, and your scene selection modes, as well as your intelligent auto. So all that's the same. When you go into the display button, you can choose what kind of screen you want displayed here. I have grid lines on here. I was shooting with the grid lines. And here you will see it's showing you what each Tri-Navi control wheel is controlling right at this moment. Right now, this one is controlling the aperture of the lens. And as you see when I turn it, the aperture automatically pops up. So that's really cool. This one is controlling the exposure compensation, which I've been using quite a lot because I'm finding the NEX7 tends to underexpose more than anything. So I've been using the exposure compensation, boosting it up when I'm out shooting. Uh, that's, what, that's what I have those set to. If you hit the display button on the control wheel, you can clean up that display. And then here you have your uh, level. So if sometimes you take a photo and it's a little crooked when you go back and look at it. You can engage this level so you make sure you're straight. Pretty cool. And this, is, this does show up in the EVF as well. So you can have a clean display or you can have all of your information. Uh, also what's cool about this camera, if you want to change the ISO on the fly, you no longer have to go to a menu, you just turn your wheel. 
you turn your wheel and you automatically go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 320, 6400, 12,800, 16,000. So you just change the ISO with a turn of the control wheel. I leave it set to auto most of the time. So again, you don't have to press any buttons, you just turn the wheel. Boom. I have this button down here set up to change the metering mode because a lot of times I will want to go in and choose spot metering. So I default at multi, multi but I, do, I did say it does kind of underexpose quite often, but this also helps to save your highlights. Um, this button up here takes you to the menu, and this is where you go into all of your settings. Basically, it's the same kind of settings as the, in NEX 5N with a couple of different ones. Um, you have your soft skin, all of that, autofocus mode, uh, AF, MF select, object tracking, uh, face registration, smile shutter, all of that stuff. Image size is where you pick your size, raw JPEG, your aspect ratio, etc. Your movie mode, you can select between all these different movie modes here. Okay. Um, brightness and color. Your creative styles, they've added some new ones in the NEX7. You have <clears throat> standard, vivid, neutral, clear, deep, deep, which says it is recreates deep colors for expression with weight, such as depth and presence. You also have um, light, recreates bright, clean colors, portrait, landscape, sunset, night, which expresses night views closer than when seen by the eye. Autumn, autumn leaves they call it, expresses autumn leaves reds and yellows more vividly, so if you're going out to shoot some fall trees, you can put it on autumn. Black and white, sepia, back to standard. Now what you also have is if you're shooting in JPEG only, you have a bunch of uh, other styles you can pick, and now I don't remember where those are at. Um, picture effect. They're not, um, they don't work when you have the camera set to raw, so I would have to go back, take it off of raw, okay, these are more for if you just want to uh, shoot JPEG. Okay, so we go back into brightness and color, and I can show you the picture effects. Toy camera, pop color, posterization, retro, soft high key. You have the partial color where you can pick your colors. Uh, everything would be black and white except the color you pick. So there's red, green, blue, and yellow. Okay. Um, you also have, let's see, go back to where I was at, high contrast black and white, which I've been digging a lot. The high contrast black and white on this camera is really good. Soft focus, HDR painting, rich tone black and white, and miniature, which is like the um, effect you get on a lot of the cameras like the EP3 diorama mode. So you have your effects there if you want to just shoot JPEG. Your setup, um, of course, you have all of the typical things where you can customize your buttons. Um, and also, there is a button up here, which is like a quick button. When you press it, it brings up settings. Like right now, it's programmed to bring up metering or focus, focus modes. So you use this Tri-Navi wheel to scroll between how you want it to focus. Center, multi, flexible spot. Um, you press it again takes you to the white balance customization. You can choose your white balance, okay? Um, and then you can adjust it, customize it with the right tri navy button. So there's lots of customization. Press the button again, and we have it set to the HDR mode. So if you want to control the HDR function, you also do so with the tri navy and the control wheel. I have uh, HDR set to off, of course, um, because I'm not a big fan of shooting HDR, and if I do it, I will do it outside of the camera. But the cool thing is you can customize any controls on this quick, quick button here. So you can customize anything, and you can customize three things. So one, the first press will bring up one option, the second press will bring up another, etc. So that's another cool button they added to the NEX7. I have to say, the NEX7 body is about 
damn near perfect because you have all the controls you need. It feels good in the hand. It's bigger than the NEX 5 and 3, which is a good thing because the 5 and the 3, while they're very cool, they're almost a little too small when you have the bigger lenses attached. So this body is actually very, very nice. Nicely made. It's solid magnesium alloy. Sony put a lot of thought into the NEX7 body. You have your quick movie record button here. One press of that and you start your movie recording. Press it again and it will stop recording. Um, so you have all these customizations and all of these buttons can be customized to whatever you want. Even this button here, the right click of the control wheel, right now it's set to creative style. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, programmable buttons that you can use for whatever you like. Um, the EVF, like I said, it's amazing. Um, best EVF I've seen, hands down, not even a contest. Uh, you have your HDMI port, your USB, your microphone plug-in. You can plug in a professional mic. The video quality on the NEX7 is amazing, and I've heard no clicking whatsoever when shooting video. I shot some boxing last night um, and a few other things on it just to try it out, and it worked wonderfully. As far as cameras with video, this might be the best I've seen to date, um, and it's small and compact and there you go. So my full review of the Sony NEX7 will be coming very soon. I might delay it a little bit due to the flood and due to the fact that this camera is not even going to be available when it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be out first week of November or say mid-November um, but from the looks of it it's been delayed and I know for a fact Sony has had like a gazillion and one pre-orders for this camera. Um, let me talk a little bit about lenses. I'm already 12 minutes into this video. I don't want to drag it out, but as you can see, this is the Sony 50mm 1.8, which is also coming soon. $299. If you're going to buy an NEX7, I'd say splurge for this lens. It's a great little lens to have, um, as well as the uh, Zeiss. The Zeiss 24 is also um, a must-own lens. Now, the Zeiss is not a super sharp lens. It's a sonar design, obviously, and I have to say that it's got some character to it. Um, the Zeiss sonar is kind of like some what you would expect from a sonar design. It's kind of uh, classical in its rendering, but also modern. The camera outputs very clean, very clean images. Um, even at higher ISOs, I mean, you're, you're going to get more noise if you're shooting in low light. But I've really uh, come to enjoy this lens quite a bit, though it's not perfect. It doesn't give me the super sharp uh, Leica-like renderings, um, but it does kind of it does kind of give you a really nice look. And at first, I wasn't too thrilled with it, but it grew on me more and more as I used it. So it's a little bit expensive. It's very light. So it's not going to weigh down the camera, but uh, it's a great lens as well. Then there's also the new kit zoom in black. has the optical steady shot built in, so this is great for taking video. Uh, it's still the same 18 to 55. They just made it in black, and Sony told me they will not be releasing this on its own. If you want the black lens, you have to buy an NEX7 kit. So there might be some popping up on the used market once these show up. So there you have it. You have the 18 to 55. You have the Zeiss 24. You have the 518, which is only in silver. I told them they should make it in black. Um, and you have the nice grip on the body. It feels really good in the hand. The video it takes is wonderful. The images are really good coming from the camera. They're clean. They're smooth. A lot of people were saying they look very digital. Well, they do because this is a digital camera, so they're going to look digital. Um, it's typical Sony look, the typical Sony look you're going to get out of this camera. 24 megapixels, really good at high ISO, uh, no, no complaints in that area whatsoever. Um, maybe not as good as the 5N. Um, I'm going to be doing a comparison with the high ISO of the 5N, but it's a no-brainer in my opinion. If you're going to get an NEX camera and you're an enthusiast and you want something with all the control, you want high resolution, you want everything that you can customize, 
and you want a killer EVF, this is the model to get. The 5N is great, I really enjoyed it, but with that external EVF, it's kind of like a little wart that grows out of the camera. This is all sleek and nice, and it just works. Uh, one more thing, I'm going to go over the uh, shutter sound. So I'm going to show you what the shutter sounds like. A lot of people have been asking for the shutter sound. Um, this has the first curtain shutter, so you're going to only hear one snick. That's it. Um, you can actually go into the settings. I'm not exactly sure where it is. And you could turn on, you could turn that feature off. And when you do that, you will hear the two clicks. Uh, I'm not really sure why somebody would like that or want to use that. Here it is. So if you turn the front curtain shutter off, you hear the double. If you um, turn that feature on, which is what I would leave it on, it's only one. I really don't know the purpose of why you would want to turn that on or off. Um, also, uh, you have the focus peaking. So if you use this camera with manual focus lenses, like Leica lenses via an adapter, you have the focus peaking inside the viewfinder. And I will be 100% honest, the focus peaking is much better than the focus peaking that uh, is used in the Ricoh GXR. It's, this one is very clear, very sure, you know you got it in focus, and with this EVF you're just like, boom, it's in focus. No worries, no doubts, you got it. Uh, so that's a very cool feature too. I can see this being used by a lot of enthusiasts who have Leica, cam or Leica lenses that they want to use. I don't have too many Leica lenses, and when you put a 50 on it, it becomes like a 75. So I really don't have the wide angles to properly test this with. I've been trying to get some, and I'm hopefully I will. But um, I'm sure there will be a lot of people online testing out the Leica glass with this camera. Um, all I really have available is a couple of 50s. So, um, But I will be posting some of those in my review as well. So this is it, the NEX7 with the kit zoom lens on it right now. Uh, with the flood delay, hopefully it'll be available sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm hearing after the first of the year, but maybe Sony will surprise us. I'm not really sure. I haven't heard anything official besides the press release that I posted on my site from Sony. So look for my review soon. I'm still going to work on it, and I'm still going to add to it. Uh, it might my review might be a little later than expected, but it's going to be coming. I'm working on it every day. So until then, always check back to stephuffphoto.com for the latest and greatest and the coolest gear around. I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and I will also be releasing a video uh, with video shot with this camera at the State Fair at night in low light. So you will see a video that I made totally on the NEX7. I'll be posting that soon as well. So keep your eye out. Thanks for watching. Again, stefafoto.com.